Georgia Fitzpatrick. And I'm Teo Torres. So how does days of rain sound? Sounds like something we haven't talked about good. in a while. Let's go right over to KCR3 meteorologist Dirk for Dorney's in for Tamara today with finally some big changes. Yeah, we, we've been seeing a little shot of rain here and there. We haven't had an extended period of rain. It looks like we may be heading towards one, but until then, we have dry conditions that continue and temperatures that will be running above average during the day, but below average in the mornings. And we're off to that start too. As we take a live look here from the uh, downtown of our Sacramento, where the capital is, we have a cool, cool morning. Temperatures in the 30s. We are going to see mostly cloudy skies today, so that's actually going to help to bring our temperatures down a little bit, but we're still going to stay above the average of 56 degrees for this time of year, and the winds are going to stay light. So what's going on? We have just this uh, just this pattern with just these high thin clouds moving over a ridge of high pressure that's going to be building into the areas. But you can see just that thin layer of clouds moving through and that is affecting conditions this morning. I mean, it's still chilly. We're still talking temperatures in the 30s. We're just not seeing temperatures down around freezing yet. We have 34 degrees in Modesto, 38 Stockton, 35 Sacramento, 34 in Yuba City. Visibility, it's been kind of popping around. Nothing's really been too dense, but we are seeing visibility now at a mile and a quarter in, at the executive airport and a mile and a half visibility near Modesto and it looks like it's kind of thickening up there in Stanislaus County. So we had that yesterday where we had some thick fog. We could see some more developing this morning. 12 hour forecast shows we'll keep those high clouds with us throughout the day with temperatures eventually peaking around 60 degrees is what we're expecting in downtown Sacramento. There's your weather. Now here's a look at traffic with Brian Hickey. Yeah, and if you're heading out onto the causeway this morning, things moving along just fine out in that direction, not seeing any delays as we take a look at the causeway and and then uh, Highway 15, Interstate 80, no problems to report along that stretch. If you're coming in from Folsom and Roseville, 5 and 99, all looking good there. And you can see again the causeway in the green, no problems to report on that stretch as you make your way out towards Davis, Vacaville, or Fairfield. I-5 and 99 looking good through the Stockton area. One vehicle over on the right-hand shoulder in the French Camp area, not seeing any delays behind that. We'll continue to monitor that for you. And as we look at westbound 205, currently a 25-minute ride, and westbound 580, 27 minutes. 99 out of Modesto, we're looking at a 13-minute ride as you make your way up towards Manteca. Here in Sacramento, Highway 50 will be a 10-minute ride out of Rancho Cordova. Interstate 80, 9-minute ride from Roseville down to the split. 5 and 99 still sitting delay-free at 11 minutes from Elk Grove. Back to you, Teo. All right, thanks so much, Brian. Now to a story that's been developing overnight. And a man accused of injuring two El Dorado County Sheriff's deputies during an attempted traffic stop has been arrested. The deputies were responding to reports of a suspicious vehicle on Knollwood Drive in Cameron Park around 6.30 last night. When they tried to contact that driver, they say he accelerated, dragging one of the deputies and then hitting a second, throwing him to the ground. The suspect was identified as this man, DeAndre Bottoms. 31-year-old had an active felony warrant out for his arrest at the time. He was found and taken into custody around 1245 this morning on Greenback Lane in Citrus Heights. We have also learned that both deputies have been released from the hospital and are recovering at home. Sacramento County Sheriff's deputies are also searching for a shooter who they say killed a man. The shooting happened at around 1.15 yesterday afternoon as a crowd was gathering in the street at Georgia Drive at North Highlands. Witnesses told the detectives that there was a big brawl between about 30 people right in the middle of the street. No word on what they were fighting about or how everybody was connected. A SWAT team came in with guns drawn because deputies believe that a suspect was barricaded inside one of the homes. Turns out there was no one there. New this morning, Sacramento Fire is responding to a structure fire out on X Street. Crews responded to that area at right around 4 a.m., right at 28th and X near Broadway. Fire crews say that the building was boarded up and previously it had been deemed unsafe. Fire was inside, so they did go through some boards to get access to try to get it out. They did get it put out without letting it spread and damage a next door grocery store. Yolo County Sheriff's deputies arrested a man they say tried to assault a child. Deputies say around 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon, a middle school student reported somebody tried to grab them. Officers quickly responded and by checking surveillance video, identified the suspect. They arrested 39-year-old Pierre Lumze at his home. He's facing charges of lewd acts on a child and assault on a child with intent to commit rape. A freak accident took the life of a driver on Interstate 5 in San Joaquin County. It happened near Highway 12 just before 6 o'clock. Investigators say that the tire came off of a trailer, flew over an I-5 guardrail, then hit a car in the opposite direction. The driver was killed on impact. Four others have minor injuries. A short pursuit in Sacramento ended in the discovery of some ghost guns. Police say that they tried to make a traffic stop and then a suspect took Took off. Suspect pulled over after a pretty brief chase, and that's when police found two loaded ghost guns during their search. Ghost guns are the ones that don't have serial numbers and they're really hard to track. The driver, Daniel Edwards, now faces a number 
of gun charges. Now to West Sacramento, where fire crews acted quickly to control a house fire on Sunset Avenue. That one started at around 930 last night with Sacramento firefighters being called in to help out. At this point, there's no word on whether or not anybody was inside. The extent of the damage or even how it started still being worked out. Well, after some intense debate, the Auburn Union School Board voted to keep an official statement that calls for diversity, inclusion, and equity. A statement issued by the board last year calls for a barrier-free learning environment that includes awareness of the impact of bias on a list of issues. That includes race, class, and gender. The proposal to remove it came up after some board members said it caused more issues than it resolved. But others argued it helps students and staff create a welcoming environment. I don't want to see that happen in our district. I don't want this to be a stepping stone towards bringing discriminatory hiring practices in. I want us to be able to evaluate every new employee on the merits of their position. I was sitting with three fifth graders who didn't know how to read. And they had been passed through our system not knowing how to read. Equity allows us to sit with those children and give them the education they need. The five member panel voted three to two to keep that statement in place. New this morning, Lodi is celebrating the completion of a major road construction project and it involves the Highway 99 Turner Road interchange, bringing two way traffic to the off ramp between Turner and Pioneer Drive. KCR 3's Mike Tassell joins us live with more on this big important change. Good morning. Yeah, and good morning, Teo and Deirdre. And we are standing right at that intersection of Pioneer and Cherokee. And not to be redundant, but this is that odd spot where for the longest time, two-way traffic turned into just one lane, forcing northbound drivers on Cherokee Lane to either turn left towards the neighborhood or be forced onto Highway 99. Now, this is a look from above at the $6 million changes coming to fix that problem. This is a new roundabout on Cherokee Lane at the Turner Road exit to improve traffic flow. And just down from that, now two-way traffic will flow past this one-way traffic spot. Why that's important is that in the past, at this intersection, those drivers who were forced to turn left, in many cases, had to cut through a residential neighborhood and right past an elementary school, along with new pathways for bicycles and pedestrians. This project also includes improved freeway ramps. Now, back out here live, yesterday project leaders held a ribbon cutting and promised to open this new road to traffic today. But keep in mind, as of this morning, you can clearly see uh, some of those road closed roadblocks are still in place uh, due to this project. And there are some electronic roadway signs that say some of these areas remain closed up to next week. So that is your current situation here on this project that is soon to be open to commuters here in Lodi. Live, Mike Desell. KCRA 3 News. Mike, thank you. City and county leaders recently have worked for about a decade to make those traffic improvements possible using a combo of state funding and local tax money. Well, new this morning, a program giving you a chance to help <clears throat> single moms by adopting their families for the holidays. I love this. KCRA yeah. 3's Melanie Wingo is in Citrus Heights now with <laughs> how it works. Well, we're outside the Single Mom Strong Organization building where on the inside a lot is happening to make it a brighter holiday for single parent led families. Earlier this week, we got the chance to go inside to take a look at all that is happening to help out with their adopt a family holiday program. Single Mom Strong getting help from volunteers working each day this week to wrap and prepare hundreds of presents for families in need. 66 families in all will benefit and they'll receive a holiday meal and a gift for the parent of the family and gifts that will fill needs and wants for each child in the family. Single Mom Strong getting requests from families. Then the group matches those families with local businesses or donors that want to help. They pick the gifts that um, they would like to give that family. They bring them to us and we coordinate um, the wrapping and the delivery, the wrapping is the labor intensive part, right? So the donors like dropping off the gifts and then we handle this part. So all that wrapping will continue through this week and on into the weekend. Those gifts will be distributed to the 66 families in need all next week. Reporting live in Citrus Heights, Melanie Wingo, KCRA 3 News. All right, Melanie, great program. If you'd like to help with Single Mom Strong's Adopt-A-Family effort this year or in the future, visit the website right there on your screen at singlemomstrong.org.